Hello. Hello. Thanks so much for joining us on this Crafting for the Holiday event. My name's Kevin. This is uh, Storm. She decided that she wanted to be a part of the video. <laughs> and I'm Erica, and we are the husband-wife duo for Kevin's Creations. We actually enjoy creating across a lot of different mediums, so we're going to be doing a couple different projects for you today. I think we're going to kick things off today with a diamond painting pen. Oh, what do you have in mind? I think a uh, evergreen pen. Like the one that's shaped like a tree? Yep. Sweet. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, I'm up first. I like uh, measuring the molds because between molds, sometimes they change a little bit. These are about one inch, so I set the saw blade for the width, and I'll zip the blank through. Very carefully. <laughs> And I don't mind if it's a little bit tall. I just just want the width. Oh, edit that out. So now are you cutting the blocks? Just yeah, individual see, blocks. Each of the bases are gonna be one inch, so I'm cutting squares out of that blank. The thumb is getting awfully close, sir. <gasps> what do you do? Oh, okay. All right, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Scaring me. Now we, uh, I'm drilling holes in the side of the block that will face the resin. That's going to give it a little bit of extra hold. So when I pour the resin in, it's going to flow into that hole. Correct? Yep. Okay. I don't know every step of the process. Oh, yay! I know these steps. So these, um, I just put the wood blocks in, and because he measured them, they fit pretty snug. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so just fitting them in there and getting them ready for the resin pour. you got to press them down. There's a block of wood underneath to keep it level. That's me. And then this is the most time consuming part sometimes. We just pump the resin and then we get more and we get more and we get more. <laughs> we get more. I don't usually use a cup this big, it's just that big for this particular pour. And then I put it up on a surface and just make sure that everything is level and measured correctly. And then comes the stirring. And, and stirring. <laughs> and stirring. And stirring. And stirring. Do it faster. <laughs> mix. I miss mix a lot. <laughs> but this is a two-part resin, so you have to um, just make sure that you get both of them. Uh, you mix them both together. You scrape the sides, and you just make sure that it's well mixed. If it is not, then you risk it running... Um, or when you pour it, it's going to be gummy and not very plasticky at all. And then we add the color. And I actually lost um, one of the colors I wanted to use. So I'm actually doing basically a custom blend. Um, so I have a darker green as the base and then um, just brightening it up a little bit with a lighter green. Full disclosure, I actually did not fully care for the color uh, <laughs> that I ended up with. So I did go back um, after some of the filming was done and uh, added a third green, but it was only a little bit. So this is kind of an overhead shot, so you can see the pretty swirls and the more mixing and more mixing and more mixing. It's amazing I can diamond paint at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> And then I just check the color, make sure that it is opaque enough. And then comes the vacuum chamber. So what this machine does is you put it in there and it sucks the air out of the pot, therefore drawing out all of the bubbles that I just mixed in. There's a lot of doing and undoing in this process, isn't there? There is. <laughs> 
So you see some white forming at the top, and that is, those are the air bubbles coming to the surface. They start out super duper small, and then they get bigger like this. And then as the bubbles get bigger, as the surface starts to clear, then it's just about done in the pot. And then we will let the air back in. And now you see them disperse. <laughs> Again, doing and undoing. <laughs> so now the pressure that we put back into the pot has pretty much popped the rest of the bubbles. And so the reason you want to do this is so that when it goes on the lathe, you don't have a whole bunch of air pockets because well, why, why don't you talk about what happens when there's air pockets? <laughs> you basically see a hole instead of a smooth surface, and it's got to either be filled in with more resin or some sort of clear uh, glue or... Yeah, it just doesn't make for a good turning process. No. And so... Here, now that I'm pouring in, I'm pouring up to the holes that are there that he pre-drilled. And I'm going to raise the mold a little bit and just kind of flex the resin into those holes and then I'll continue filling it. Doing that just kind of pushes the air out so there's no holes in there and that just makes it sturdier. Now, in this case, I knew that I was mixing up extra. Um, I only did two out of the four blanks in this mold. Um, you have to watch how much resin you mix, otherwise you could end up with a very bad... Uh, <laughs> it's called a flash cure. You might know a thing or two about that. Um, so I actually had a, a mold ready. This is going to be a one of our little trash minder cups. So I just poured some extra in there. And then comes the swirling. So if you leave the resin untouched, you probably you see that line um, that formed in the center. If you leave the resin untouched, it will just do its own thing. Um, and as you will see soon, resin has a mind of its own and it just moves and does what it wants. Uh, but if you leave it unswirled, you just kind of end up with a solid color almost yeah and that dark line that you saw um here i'm just topping it off because it is filling in um, just a couple of the gaps and the resin will shrink as it cures so never hurts to have a little bit more but if you don't stir it then it just you kind of end up with that dark line that you saw in the center which could be a cool effect on its own but not what we're going for here so now it is curing and so what you're going to see here is how the resin moves. I just think this is so cool. It's just how the resin moves <laughs> all on its own um, during that curing process. This is what you don't see even when you're standing there watching it. In the in, Initially you do. Like when you, after you first pour it, um... You can, you can see that movement, but as it cures on the outside um, and hardens on the outside, then, you, then it stops moving. Now, it's not completely done here, so I'm just going to go back in because um, you can see it moved around and we lost some swirls. So I'm just going to go back and add some in. So it's kind of like a magic show because you just see a blue glove right now, but then you're going to see pretty green swirls. <laughs> the blue glove is like the curtain. <gasps> yes. Okay. Am I done swirling? Wow. Ta da! <laughs> and so now that will just finish curing. All right. So we came back the next day and. It is demold time. This is my favorite part of the day, really. I come down to the shop and demold whatever I poured the night before, and it's always exciting. I make him stop whatever he's doing and come look. 
And it is kind of like Christmas because you never know what the <laughs> resin did in, overnight. Oh, gosh, that is not a lie. You can because you can only see what's on top. You can't see anything underneath. Yay! Now I take back over. <laughs> I always like to sure up the sides kind of take the uh, little ridges that form off of there and the ends as well because sometimes the molds aren't square sometimes the cuts aren't square so uh, yeah first the little ridges that form at the top and then the ends and what that <laughs> what taking care of the ends does is that just makes sure that between my two points on the lathe it keeps it straight Lopsided turning is not recommended. No. Oh. <laughs> now we're back to my jig here, and this will drill the same hole that I have in the other side that you can't see, but this will be for your diamond painting tips. So the first hole was on the inside, and that was covered by the resin, so now you're drilling the holes for the tips, which also is the holes that makes you, that allows you to put on the lathe. Correct. Right. Okay. Now, there's not a lot of things that you turn like this, but uh, this relies on posts, um, two posts, one on either end. Uh, one is to drive it, and one is just to hold it in place. Now, a lot of people use just the, uh, the cone. Um, I believe they call it the live center. Um, I made a jig like this to fit in that over that live center and the other end is just a post that's custom sized to fit in that hole. And this ladies and gentlemen is where it gets scary. <laughs> For me. Yeah after you turn <laughs> a few pens it's, <laughs> it's not really all that scary. This part is the messiest part of the process. Um, before you get the, uh, the blank round, you're constantly batting the shavings towards yourself. Now that it's round, it's actually being picked up by the vacuum. Um, so, so, just to, I just want to clarify, so you started out with that square blank and you made it round first. Yep. That's where you use your mask because otherwise you get hit in the face, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now that it's round, you can see those uh, swirls again. I'll start by making the base of the tree. Can I just say, you really make it look easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is still spinning, right? It is still spinning. <laughs> and that's on purpose because uh, I have it actually chiseled out to the right so that I can place the uh, the ruler closer and then because it's spinning all I do is hold the pencil against the blank and I get my lines I just spaced them out approximately oh well I guess it was a little more than an inch apart because they're the blanks are five and a quarter and there's basically five sections to this so the lines that you drew that's where you want to because we're turning an evergreen pen, so those lines are what you drew, so you know where to stop. Like, yep, how far you're in, doing the indent. Yep, those okay. are going to be uh, my divider lines. There so. you go, divider lines. That sounds good. <laughs> and so, yeah, what he was talking about before, there at the top of the screen, you see the vacuum that is uh, thoroughly decorated in resin shaving. So there actually is a vacuum that is a long hose. So as he is turning. It is sucking those those shavings um, into <laughs> uh, mostly into a, a vacuum um, and keeping the shop kind of clean. Clean -er. but <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this time of year, it is so super staticky, so you can get super long strings. Yeah, yeah. That what doesn't get picked up with the vacuum gets picked up by me and sticks with me through the day. 
I think what scares me too is that you just like reach in and you're like, yeah, let me just, yeah, let me just pick this off. No problem. How fast is that spinning? Uh, that is going three million RPM. <laughs> uh, close, thirty-five hundred. That's <laughs> <laughs> only off by a couple zeros. It's fine. <laughs> couple commas. <gasps> Look at that. I do stop quite a few times through the process just to make sure that there's nothing going on on the inside that I can't see. And by the way, when he is turning and I have to come look at something that, ooh, look at that, is usually my reaction. Uh, this is a CA glue. Um, a lot of people use this for finishes. I'm not actually using it for a finished coat. I let this soak into the pour pours and then I wipe it off and I'll spray it so that it solidifies quick and all this does is it seals the wood from the elements and it also gives it a really nice shine too but it doesn't have that coat where it'll crack or break it just looks really good and you just do that on the wood you don't do that on the resin right there's no real need to uh, seal the resin And now, this is kind of like the uh, stirring and mixing for the <laughs> resin. <laughs> it's the uh, monotonous part that nobody really likes but is very necessary. It's the sanding and polishing and guess what? Sanding and polishing. Sanding and polishing. Do you have to sand and polish? Mm, just a little bit. Just the one time though, right? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> There are so many times where you get through all the sanding uh, grits and each of, well, I don't really break it up here to show which grit, but I go from 400 grit all the way up to 3000 grit, and then I move on to the pastes. But uh, there's so many times where you get through all of the grits and you're ready to go to the paste and then you see a line that you didn't see before you got to go back and it won't sand out with the 3000 it won't sand out with the 2500 you got to go all the way back to 800 and start the process all over again so when you're sanding you start with a lower number which is a heavier grit and the higher numbers are a finer grit yep. so it just gets more and more smooth as you go along yep and what is the point of having a wet piece of sandpaper the wet piece of sand well yeah the wet sanding what that does is it lubricates the uh, the surface and uh, the sandpaper so that it doesn't they call it give it giving it a burn um, so you don't set yourself on fire <laughs> well <laughs> it doesn't actually catch fire it's no. just it causes a rough spot in the plastic because that's what resin really is um, wow. but yeah it lubricates it and you can sand much finer that way okay I know it's a, a video but can you can you stop it so I can see the pretty greens again <laughs> nope <laughs> 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 well I could but that wouldn't do th good things for this recording <laughs> I just love how a lot of the stuff that we use to to color the resin is mica and it just it has its own shimmer it just does its own thing and you can you can mix it in and some parts can be dark and some parts can be light and it's just beautiful and these uh, pastes that I'm using to polish um, I used two abrasive pastes and then uh, it's kind of like an auto wax uh, polish and that's the final steps to really bring out that shine oh. and that's our evergreen pen and that's it it's all done all done yay <laughs> on to some cookies 
turned out awesome. You did a good job, honey. You did too. Thanks. I like your idea of cookies. Me too. <laughs> Question though. Do you like the idea of making the cookies or eating the cookies? Uh, I'll go with the eating every time. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. So, I'm about Christmas cookied out though. So, however, I was given a recipe that is supposedly Donna Kelsey's recipe. Now, if you're a pro football fan or you're a Swifty, you know who Donna Kelsey is. Anyway, these cookies look amazing. So, I think I'm going to go try them. And I'll try them when you're done. You got it. Hey guys, welcome to our uh, creative kitchen. I am going to be doing some cookies. <clears throat> Normally I would do something I have already done, but I decided to go out on a limb and try something completely new. Um, I have never made this recipe before, so uh, welcome along for the adventure. Um, shout out to Lindsay over at Life with Lindsay because she's the one that sent me this recipe. Um, I don't know, you know, it, it's out there. It's, uh, Donna's, Donna Kelsey's chocolate chip cookies. So these are things, um, cookies that she makes to take to the games. Apparently everybody loves them. So I'm going to, um, give them a shot today. So I wrote out the um, list of ingredients that are needed and then I wrote out the directions because this was all in a um, in an Instagram reel so um, I have gathered everything together and I'm just going to kind of be walking through the process um, we're going to do the wet quote-unquote ingredients we're going to do the dry ingredients and then the recipe says to refrigerate um, for at least three hours, but ideally overnight. Um, overnight is not going to happen, but I can do three hours. Um, so that's where, that's what we're going to do. Hopefully it'll be a lot of fun and hopefully these cookies will be good. Uh, we are not going for per, uh, perfect, um, or professional. We are just really going for edible. So that's what we're looking for. First thing we're going to do is we're going to melt the butter in the microwave. This is a cup and a half of butter. I will try and remember to tell you all the ingredients as I go along. I may forget, um, but I will make the recipe available um, either in the comments or on our Facebook page so you can grab it. Um, but it's a cup and a half of butter, so it's three sticks, and we're going to melt them. While we are waiting for the butter to melt, I'm actually going to start measuring out the sugar and the brown sugar. And it's going to make a mess. That's okay. Um, so we need a cup and a half of light brown sugar and one cup of white sugar. Was a little light, so top off. All right. So I'm just gonna take it out and press it down into the measuring cup. There's our cup, and now we need the half. Yes, that's up. I get kind of tired of Christmas cookies pretty quickly. Because it's like, oh, Christmas cookies, and then you binge on them, and you're like, okay, yeah, that's, that's enough. So, but I am a sucker for chocolate chip cookies. If somebody wanted to kidnap me, it would show up in a van and advertise free chocolate chip cookies and I would go so melt the butter in the microwave pour it into the mixing bowl or stand mixer and then it says to let it cool here is our butter I can make it a little bit holiday with my spatula I love this little spatula I have been using this for 
quite a number of years. Okay, so I have everything washed and rinsed. This is pretty cool. Um, it's not definitely not hot anymore. So I'm going to take the next steps, but before I do that, the recipe does call for a teaspoon of baking soda, but it's dissolved in two tablespoons of hot water. So I'm going to go ahead and start that step and then backtrack so I can get everything mixed like it is supposed to be. So we're just going to set that aside until we need it. All right, so now we're going to add the sugar into the bowl. We're going to mix that for four minutes. We're going to mix it after I put the attachment on. All right, so we are going to add the white sugar and the brown sugar. It doesn't say what speed to mix it at. Um, so we're just going to wing it. And if you don't have a stand mixer, um, I really wouldn't worry about it. Um, I do because me trying to hold on to bowls while I'm mixing something, it just, it's a disaster. So, uh, <laughs> So I need the the sturdiness and the steadiness of the stand mixer. Um, but this can be done by hand. Um, that's actually what was shown in the video. So I'm going to lock it and away we go. Okay. That has been our four minutes. Now it says the next ingredient we're going to add um, is eggs. And I set them on a separate counter because, you know, grace. I would probably knock it off with my elbow or something. So the eggs that we're adding though, it's one, one egg plus one egg yolk. Yes. Um, so we're going to do the first one and if you are new to any kind of cooking or baking, <clears throat> when you crack an egg, you want to put it in a, you want to crack it into a smaller bowl first, um, just in case there's any shells or anything that get caught in that. And then you, then you can dump it into your thing. I'm just going to stir this in. There's the one, and this is um, a, an egg separator. So I'm going to crack the egg and probably should have chosen a smaller bowl. It's okay, we'll make it work. So with the separator, you put the egg in. It's not supposed to go over the top like that, but We'll roll with it. So that separates the egg yolk from the egg white. Yolk is going in there. So again, I'm gonna just stir these in. And when I was mixing the brown sugar in the butter, I did not have it up very high because um, if you were mixing this by hand, um, it, it, you would not be going super fast. So I did not have the mixer going super fast. All right, so we're going to cut that. And then the next ingredient is a tablespoon of vanilla. So we're going to add that in. Then we are going to mix it for 30 seconds. Then we are going to add the uh, dissolved baking soda. You're probably not supposed to do it this way, but I'm just doing it over the bowl because a little extra vanilla doesn't hurt. Okay. All right. So 30 seconds. And I realized I forgot to scrape the sides earlier, so we'll do it now. Okay. 
again, not going for perfect, just edible. It's just the hot mess kitchen. It's fine. There, let's get this out of there. Lock it down, and we're going to mix it up a little bit more. All right. It looks like everything is pretty well blended. <clears throat> and so we're just going to push this out of the way a little bit. And we're gonna move on to our dry ingredients. So, for this we need two cups of all-purpose flour. All right. oh, I need... Okay, so it's two cups of the all-purpose flour. And again, if you're, right. I apologize, my arms are gonna be in the way, but it needs to be done this way. If you are newer to baking, you never just, and honestly, this is probably supposed to be sifted, but we're just rolling with it. You never want to um, pack the flour in, it's best to spoon it out and just kind of tap it in. And then you want to level it out. You never want a Keeping cup of flour. And actually, that will fill in the gaps. So there's one. Okay. And again with our scraper. My mom always used a scraper like this. She has, oh gosh. She does Christmas cookies every year, and anytime she bakes, especially the cookies, she's always used, I don't even know what this is, some kind of scraper like this, so um, invaluable. Right. Now, the recipe also calls for um, a cup of cake or pastry flour, and rather than buy special ingredients, um, I just did a little research online and you can actually do um, a cup of flour with, and then you remove two tablespoons of the flour and put in two tablespoons of cornstarch. So that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be pretty messy, but I'm going to go do that and uh, then we'll be back to continue mixing. Okay, so I got all that, and I'm just mixing it up a little bit here. Right, so I'm just going to jump that in there because yeah, it's going to get mixed up anyway. Okay. All right, we need our baking powder, cinnamon, our salt. We need a teaspoon of baking powder. Okay. There's our teaspoon of baking powder. Let me grab another. Right, we're gonna do our teaspoon of cinnamon. one and a half teaspoons of salt. Now this is a half teaspoon so this is going to be three if you see me uh, if you're wondering why I'm doing three of them. Three halves is one and a half so one, two, three. 
Now, I read through the comments on this uh, <clears throat> recipe, and there were a lot of people that were dissing the uh, teaspoon of cinnamon. I, I don't... I don't understand why they think cinnamon and chocolate is a horrible combination. And in some cases it might be, but I will be honest, I do not mind uh, a teaspoon of cinnamon, or any cinnamon, I guess, in my chocolate chip cookies. It does not upset me. That's pretty well mixed. I'm gonna pull this guy forward again. All right, so we're gonna lock this down. We are gonna turn it on, and I'm just going to add the dry ingredients in, and we'll see how it goes. One last scraping, one last mix, and we will add some chocolate chips. Right. At this point, I'm going to take the bowl off because what's going to happen is after we mix the chips in, it goes in the fridge for three hours or overnight, whichever you prefer or have time for. And there we have it. So this will go in the fridge for a couple hours and uh, look at that. It does call for milk chocolate chips. Um, I don't care for milk chocolate chips. I use the semi-sweet so uh, I went rebel, went rogue. We'll see what happens. So see you soon. Okie dokie and we're back. Um, <clears throat> so I just got the cookie dough out of the fridge. It has been sitting, um, the directions say to preheat the oven to 350, let the dough come to room temperature, scoop onto a sheet five minutes before baking and leave about two inches in between. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and scoop. And by the time I'm done, um, hopefully the oven will be done. Um, and to get it to room temperature, it just needs to sit for, about five to ten minutes um, just until it's pliable. So let's get rolling. There we go. Round one. And uh, I gotta tell you, these smell absolutely fantastic. I really just want to eat them raw. I'm, I'm all about eating the raw cookie dough, but this, this is a little much, but I cannot wait to get these baked. So we're just going to wait until the oven is done uh, preheating. We'll let these sit for a couple minutes and then into the oven they go. This is what we got. Hey, babe. Yeah. Come on over. We're gonna get Kevin's first impressions here. Size cookie. 
cookie. <laughs> sure. Huh. What you can't see because it's off camera is it's just completely crumbling and he folded it. <laughs> well, he hasn't keeled over yet. <laughs> down, mm. down. There you go. <laughs> so at least Yum. he's good. <laughs> Like I said at the beginning, not going for perfection, just going for edible. So I did do another round of cookies that is uh, in the oven right now. I did them smaller <laughs> instead of being so big. So we'll see what happens with those. I'll include a picture there uh, of them at the end. So. For the record, you can fold them like a tortilla, but they taste absolutely amazing. They are crazy, hella delicious. So that could have gone better. My taste buds say different. <laughs> well, I'm glad. And these are just Keep going. <laughs> oh my. I don't care. They are really yummy. <laughs> I will definitely make these again and uh, maybe make a couple corrections. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a bit of an adventure. You want to take a break? Yes, absolutely. That sounds fantastic. I'll get my diamond painting. Of course you will. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <sighs> okay. Well, we've obviously been pretty busy making pens and disasters. I mean, cookies. So now we're just going to take a rest. What are you working on? We had a request at the last craft show for an elephant sun catcher. So I'm oh. going to be working on sketching up an elephant. I did not know that we had a request for an elephant. We did. Cool. Have you started yet? Nope. Oh, sweet. <laughs> All right. Well, then I can't wait to see what you do. I, of course, am working on a diamond painting because it's like the only craft I've been able to stick to. So this is Spirits. The artist is Robin Coney, I think is how you pronounce her name, and it comes from Diamond Art Club. All righty. This is Blank Slate <laughs> by me. <laughs> You made the paper yourself too? Uh, if you'll believe it, sure. <laughs> okay, I know your schedule in the shop, and no, I do not believe you. I wouldn't put it past you, but I'm just not believing it right now. <laughs> All right, so you, sir, are in the hot seat today. What did I do? <laughs> you know, I think the question is more some days, what didn't you do? But mm. uh, we won't talk about that right now. So. I have questions. They number three. I have answers. They may or may not match up with your questions. <laughs> oh, all right. So, what is your favorite Christmas song? Mm. Okay. Actually, you know what? For this one, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back a little bit, and I'm going to say, do you have a favorite Christmas song? That would probably be a better question right now. None that really stick out. And just in general, they're Christmas songs. I mean, it's the genre in general. There's a few that I don't really care for, <laughs> but <laughs> like the every time Mariah Carey gets defrosted. Uh... <laughs> Cool, that's cool. I really like K 
Carol of the Bells. That is one of my favorites. I prefer the instrumental song actually without the words. I do actually like the Mariah Carey song. One of my other favorites is, and it's sad because I don't know the title, but it's, it's Kelly Clarkson one. So I think that and then uh, Oh Holy Night. Those are my favorite. Because you can't have just one favorite. There's no one one song to rule them all. I'd have to agree with you with the uh, Carol of the Bells. That, that is one that usually sticks out. Treat. All right, question number two. What is your favorite Christmas movie? Oreos. What? I told you some of the answers may not match up with the questions. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yep, yep. This is a, this is not uh, this is not scripted, folks. This is just Kevin on a daily basis. Uh, Ain't it grand? <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite Christmas show would probably be Scrooge with Bill Murray. Is that the one that I finally watched for the first time ever, like last year? Yep. Yeah, that was pretty good. I like that one. I. I don't think I have a favorite Christmas movie. Um, yeah. Christmas Vacation is a close second. I do like that one. But, like, there's nothing that I think... Actually, well, I do need to say that Die Hard is actually probably a really good answer to that question. Because, yes, I fall into the category of it's a Christmas movie. I have no problem with that. <laughs> That's good. That's very good. But yeah, I don't think that there is a particular movie that I need to see every year. But that could also be because we haven't watched movies in a long time. If I were to come across a movie, I'd be like, oh yeah, I do like that one. But yeah, Christmas movies aren't a really... Uh, A big part of the holiday, I guess, for us. We're too busy for TV. We are too busy for a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your third question, sir. What is your favorite Christmas tradition? Well, it didn't really start out as a tradition when I was young. But my tradition as of now is I like making gifts for people, making my own gifts for people. Instead of doing the regular shopping, I like finding out or just knowing what someone's interests are and making something that I think they would like from scratch. Awesome. And actually, because of when, you know what, no, we're just not going to go there. I was going to say, because of when this airs, you could actually probably talk about specifics, but um, just in case something changes, we probably shouldn't do that. But actually, let's, so let's talk about it, like a general idea of the things that um, have become tradition to make for you. Uh, every year... The nieces, nephews, they all get an ornament of some sort. Um, I try to put the year on there. And the families, they also get ornaments. I don't do one for every individual, but each family. <laughs> well, on your side, and my parents, and my brother. That's how it started out, though, was actually making individual ornaments, though, right? Mm hmm For everybody. But that yeah. did get to be... Way too much. But, yeah. Because I have three sisters, and they all have their own families. <coughs> so, 
Well, that's cool. I, uh, well, one of my favorite traditions actually hasn't, uh, taken place in, gosh, well, it's been a couple years now. One of my favorite traditions is actually our small business Saturday shopping tradition. <laughs> We've become the small business. I, <laughs> I know. Oh, the irony. <laughs> but every year we used to pick a town, um, either here or down in Maryland, some place that's not too terribly far, but we would pick a a different town to go to and just go shopping in that town. Um, there was one year we had went to a chocolate store. Um, that same town also had a, like a oil and vinegar place and you could go and you could taste all the things. One year we went to, it was like an indoor shopping place. They had the honey. We got all these different kinds of honey, like the whipped, oh, the yeah. cinnamon whipped. Oh, that was really good. Um, we went to a town that had a toy store, so yeah, that was our tradition for many years, and I kind of missed that. Um, but you're right, we we are the small business now, so things change. I think my other favorite tradition is gathering at my parents' house for Christmas, and it's <coughs> it's not not the like the gifts or the opening of the gifts it's just that tradition which you have now been indoctrinated into where first we open the stocking oh well okay so first of all everybody's in pjs that's like rule number one and then everybody goes down we do stockings if we go to, everybody goes back upstairs and we have uh dinner sometimes sometimes it's breakfast Whatever the meal is, it is always the same thing. It is those um, cinnamon, buns. yeah, with and without pecans. And then we go back down and we open gifts. And it's not any of those one things that's the tradition. It's just, or the, sorry, it's not any of those one things that is the favorite. It's just the tradition overall of that whole process. So let's never break that family, okay? <laughs> I heard them all say okay. Oh, gosh. How's your elephant coming? Uh, I'm not really a big fan of the overall head shape, but it looks like an elephant. Menacing. Aw, that's cute. It's a good first phase. I usually do this on the computer, but that wasn't going to work to put up here. I have a drawing pad, pad downstairs for the computer, and I draw directly onto the computer. This has no undo button. <laughs> sure it does. It's just manual. <laughs> And you still see traces. <laughs> but that's okay, because see, you do that, and then you know where not to draw again, because you didn't like that line. Sure, we'll go with that. I'm helping, okay? <laughs> okay. Did I say the last question was the last question? Uh, I don't know. Okay, well, it wasn't the last question, because I do have one more. Okay. So... What do you think our future selves are doing today? So today is Boxing Day, which do you know why they call it Boxing Day? Uh, I believe I do. I think I may have just learned that this year. <laughs> <laughs> because you learned that we were going on, going to be uh, airing on Boxing Day? I don't know if I made that connection or not. <laughs> oh. Well, for those who don't know, and I don't have full details on it, obviously you can Google it, but I believe Boxing Day was a tradition that started in the UK, or is still a tradition in the UK, I have no idea, 
but I believe it's UK based and basically it was the day that upper class folks boxed up goodies to pass out to those who were less fortunate than themselves. Am I correct? Yep. Sweet. So anyway, going back to today, what do you think our future selves are doing today? Besides, don't tell me that we're live in the chat with, the, no, I know we're doing that. What else do you think we're doing? Depends. <laughs> How far in the future are we talking? Just today, the day after Christmas. Oh. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing absolutely nothing. For the first time in months, we will be doing nothing. <laughs> are you sure? No. Oh, oh, see, there you go. See, what happens if you get some new toys that you just, uh, I'm sorry, tools that you just have to play with? <laughs> yes, I will probably not be able to talk myself out of going to the basement. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I knew it. I really hope that I'm just going to be diamond painting. And I hope it's not this canvas <laughs> because I've been working on this for a long time. I absolutely love it, but I'm ready to move on to something else because this has been a couple months in the works. It's not that big. I just haven't had that much time. So whatever it is, I'm looking forward to it because yeah, I'm not going to be in the basement, I know that. <laughs> I'll make some noise to remind you I'm still here. <laughs> Let me know you're still alive. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, I think that is all the time we have, so... Bye! Where? Oh, there I am. Bye, guys! Bye! <laughs> And that's a wrap on our time here. We're glad you could join us, and we hope you enjoyed our creative creative adventures. Stay tuned for Mr. Christopher Colossa. He is up next. Um, and please be sure to show some love to all the creators you've seen. If you like any channel in particular, go back, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Please show them some love. Thank you to all the creators who have participated in this event. And from our home to yours, we wish you a season filled with joy and peace and a very happy and healthy new year. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas!